Some say that alongside this see-it-to-believe-it world is the shadowy realm of the supernatural. Sometimes the residents of that dimension touch us, and in one moment, our lives are changed forever. America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers, Mary Ann Pohl, is your real ghost chatter host. On this podcast, you'll hear stories by real people who have seen real ghosts. Once in a while, Mary Ann will podcast a tale taken from the genre she loves best, the supernatural. Welcome to today's Real Ghost Chatter episode. Have you heard about Anchor? If you haven't, I'm here to tell you it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and I mean free. I haven't paid a dime to produce or distribute my podcasts. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. How easy is that? Podcast distribution can be a headache, but not with Anchor. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. As a bonus and not an obligation, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I'm Marianne Paul, America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers and a charter member of Author Masterminds. My guest today is Brent Stevens. Brent resides in Grove City, Ohio with his wife of eight years and his five-year-old daughter. Brent currently works for Rumpke Waste in Columbus, Ohio. He grew up in Pennsylvania and also lived there for a better part of his adult life. Brent has been to Gettysburg numerous occasions, which is where he had his first paranormal experience. He heard marching in the distance at night when no one was around and it was during the winter. He has been investigating for 10 years. Brent has been to several locations, including the Ohio State Reformatory, the Bel Air House in Ohio, and the Hinsdale House in New York. While using meditation techniques, Brent discovered he is clairvoyant and he can hear and feel things when investigated haunted places. Welcome to the show, Brent. Thank you. From your intro, it sounds like you've had a lot of paranormal experiences. Is that true? That's true. Good. I mean, otherwise, why would you want to be here right now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you to tell us about some of your memorable experiences. And I know one of them is the Lincoln County Jail in Ohio. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Just start talking about your experiences. People just, I mean, I love to hear them. So not, and to people that listen to my show seem to love them too. Well, the old, old Lincoln County Jail, there was a uh, woman who uh, murdered her husband, I think it was back in the 1800s or something like that. Uh, she resided there for a couple of years, and I think she was put to death there. Wow. Yeah. Well, I was with a team helping them out out of Illinois. They were called the In the Shadows. Well, what they do for their webcast show. There was only four, four, yeah, four of them. They were all scattered throughout the prison. I was down monitoring the uh, cameras everything like that and there was two other people but they were in the office it was uh jeff fent and terry long and all of a sudden we heard this loud woman scream and i jumped up i ran out to the office where jeff and terry were and i asked did you hear that and they said oh yes that happened all the time would have had to been may varner her name was may varner that was that's her name wow and And she uh, murdered her husband right Yes. At the end, when everybody came down, I asked if anybody else heard the woman scream. They said no, but I had two other witnesses say that they heard it. That makes sense because I've had an experience where I was told that in fact I heard it and nobody else around me heard it. Yes, that happens too. I don't know why that happens, but it seems to, huh? Mm -hmm. And then when I was on a public hunt, the first time there, I was down in the dungeon and I got an EVP of get out and a growl in my ear. Oh, no, that's not good. (laughs) (laughs) I've been there twice, so that would say that's one of my memorable experiences. Yeah. 
And this was at the Lincoln County Jail? Yes, in Ohio. Do you have, <laughs> you can't remember the name of where it's at? <laughs> that, it starts that's with okay. an eight, and I'm like. Well, I bet if we, I get, bet we can Google that kind of a thing real quick. Oh yeah. And, you know, and I'll find out for you. Okay, so, thank you. And here I am, everybody. <laughs> just, Google away. Lost, lost uh, my memory thought there. Uh, well, you know, it happens. Licking, yeah, Licking County Jail. L I C K. Is Sorry it L I C K? Yes, ma'am. L I C K I N or just lick? lick licking. Licking County. That's why I was there. I was. Sorry about that. That's okay. Not your fault. <laughs> oh, hold on. There we go. Licking County. So does that sound like Newark? That's it, Newark. All right. So, <laughs> Newark, Ohio. Okay. So, <laughs> it's licking. L-I-C-K-I-N-G for people if they want to look it up and get some history on it. Yep. Yep. And it's in Newark, Ohio. That's it. Okay. Yes. You're right. So do you have history of the people that were there that died other than the woman that was? No, um, that's the only one off the top of my head. I'd be interesting <laughs> to look her up and see what she did, right? I mean, right. obviously she killed her husband. So you've talked Thanks. about, you think you have hauntings in your own house? there and yes. in other places you've lived you yes. want to talk about any of those well the current home that we're in now my wife has been hearing knocking at the door when no one's there last night i thought i heard when i turned the light on in the laundry room i heard a bang upstairs and i ran up and asked if everybody was okay and they said why that <laughs> i just heard a bang and said nope we didn't hear anything so Great. That weird. <laughs> so have you tried to record anything in your house yet or not? Yes, uh, we did. Uh, my wife and I, my wife doesn't believe in any of this stuff. Well, she does, but it freaks her out. Uh -huh. She would rather watch it on TV than actually go do it. I truly so, understand uh, what she's talking about. But, yeah. But we, uh, we did the Estes method. What is that? The Estes method is where one of us puts the headphones on and uses a spirit box and the other one asks questions, and the one with the headphones can't hear what the other person's asking. So we did a Estes method. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen that done, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we got an EVP of Rick came through, the name Rick. Now, really? who that is, I have no idea. We have no idea who it is. It could have been from the places that I've been, mm -hmm. or could be something following my wife and I, or we don't know. Wow. Does it make you nervous to have these things happening in your home? No, no, I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool, but it's, it's freaking my wife out. <laughs> well, yeah. Mainly when you have a five-year-old around, you know, a little kid. That's probably yeah. what would freak you out the most. And and your little your little one isn't having anything showing that she's seeing them? She says there's a monster in her room. Uh-oh. But I I don't I don't know. That's that's a little that's a little girl though. They always say that, I think. She says, well, she can't sleep in her room. She'll lay there, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, she'll come over and sleep with us. Yeah, that's hard to tell if it's something there or if it's her age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we are going, trying to decide. Yeah. Uh, our previous home, before we moved in our new home, we were hearing things over there, too. When we moved out, moved over here to the new one, I went over and investigated our house. And I was walking through the empty house. I walked upstairs, walking around, and all of a sudden I heard chain, like change hit the floor like a nail. I'm like, what was that? Mm. And I got an EVP of it. I have no idea what it was. Wow. There was nothing in the house at all. Huh. And this was the house you're now living in? No, this is my previous The home. previous house. Okay, got it. Took and me a second. Out that, yep, and I found out from the neighbors that someone uh, shot himself in our bedroom. Oh, so do you think that was a nail or maybe a cartridge hitting the floor? That, that's what the uh, medium that I had on the phone with said. Sound like a, a cartridge hit the floor. Okay, that would make sense if he shot himself there. Yeah. So did you have to deal with any other experiences when you lived there or was that just the only one? That was just the only one. That's enough, I think. But <laughs> yep, yep. So I know since you've done so many places, you know, I don't know which ones have been your most memorable, but I think you also said something about the, to me about the Ohio State Reformatory. 
Yes. Yes, I was with a uh, public ghost hunt, an overnight ghost hunt, and I took a couple, a man and a woman, upstairs to the uh, Jesus room. There's a big painting of Jesus on the room, on the wall, and there was nothing really going on. Everybody was just walking around. It was just us three upstairs. The couple started to leave. We walked back downstairs, and the man goes, I'm going to give this one more shot. I said, okay. So he yelled out, asked if there's any spirits here. Give us a sign. Let us know that you're here because we're leaving, and we probably won't be back for a while, so we're leaving now. He asked if we could make a knock or a bang, and then about two seconds later, he heard this loud bang. I'm like, mm. oh, wow, you got him going now. <laughs> 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 is that all you guys did or did you try anything else after that i think that was it that's all that really happened that night i don't know when i'm in a dark room and, and i hear a loud bang i jump about 40 feet so yeah yep, yep. and there was no, nobody else up there except for us three so <laughs> the other time was i was with a little group maybe about six or seven of us out of the whole prison and i was up up in the cell blocks just hanging out in one of the cells and all of a sudden here you could hear the cell doors clamp, you know, shut, mm. open. Did you see any? You didn't see any, just heard them? I just heard them. I didn't see anything shut or anything, but. So when you were in Gettysburg, have mm -hmm. you gone back there since you've been an adult? Yeah, that was when, when I heard the marching. Right. It was just me and my wife. It was like uh, during the winter, we were out there for my grandmother's funeral. So uh, we were just going through it and we come back out about nine o'clock at night stopped at one of the statues on the way out and all of a sudden I could hear this marching in the background and drums I'm like okay that's the first time I've ever heard that wow that was really cool that would be so cool for some reason I thought you'd been there as a child and experienced that but no 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 it was that being an adult being a child I was, wasn't really paying attention to that stuff right <laughs> some kids do though <laughs> right what other places have you been? There's a place in um. There's a place in Lancaster. There is a place in Lancaster though. It's called the Clear Creek Metro Park in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. There's two rock formations. One when you come into the park, and then there's one further in the park. Now this place is really creepy at night because there's nowhere, there's nobody around, and it's just rock, and then there's a cliff up top. This one rock is called the Witch's Rock. That's the further in the park and then there, the one that's beginning of the park is the leaning rock mm -hmm. the second one the witch's rock is where they supposedly sacrificed animals and humans mm -hmm. and i took my wife there on a dark night so we got to check this out so we get out of the car and uh, my wife says i don't feel so good i don't like this place at all we need to go so I started taking pictures and you can see the mist in the camera with ghostly faces. Oh, really? In it. So. Wow. It, it, it's a pretty creepy place. And this was the Witch's Rock, not the Leaning Rock. No, this is the Witch's Rock in Lancaster, Ohio, Clear Creek Metro Park. I have heard of other places just like that in other areas and other states. Mm -hmm. It sounds like your wife, did she get nauseous? Yes, uh -huh. she, said she, didn't feel, she didn't feel good. So she said, we have to leave. Yeah, I've heard that a very thing about people, well, when there's an evil entity about, that they get that they get really sick at their stomachs. Yeah. She, yep. she sounds it's like it. she's really sensitive. Yes, yes, she is. Oh. Um, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel a thing. I, I felt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. <laughs> <Doctors>. <laughs> Like, and your wife's wanting to throw up, and yeah, and you're, yep. like, and you're like, let's stay longer. <laughs> uh -huh. I, yeah, I do, but I said, okay, without respect for you, we will leave. You have a photo you said of that? Yes, I have to find it. Well, if you had it close, I was going to say email it to me, and I'd put it up on the with the uh, audio of this. Okay, yeah, so yeah. People could take a look at it. That'd be really cool. I, I still have it. What else I, have you done? And oh let's see here i can name a whole bunch of places that i've been to okay if you would like i'd love um, it and do you have any stories with them or just the places i have some stories if i can remember them all well um okay well <laughs> there was an event going on in bryan ohio uh-huh we 
investigated, I think it was like five different places. Uh, there was Father John's church. There was a police station. Well, at the police station is where I got my name called through the geo box, a uh, portal box. It cuts out all the static and all you hear the, is the echo. Mm-hmm. Well, we were investigating with that and I heard my name called. And then there was a uh, evil laugh in a corner. I was in a room by myself and I heard an evil laugh. It sounded like female. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's what they call a a granary. There was, well, there's railroad tracks that go by there. And a woman and a child died Mm. across the tracks, I think is what the story was. And then I saw a light anonymously Mm -hmm. in the grain. In the grain, granary? Yep, in the granary. And we had a incident there where at the same time I saw that, a young lady on the tour, she passed out. Really? Oh, yep. She fell to the ground, and she had to be taken out. And you know, was she in the granary the at the time? Yes. She, she was in with us. Yep. I wonder if that light anomaly went through her or something, or hit her. Because I was right behind her. It must have. It must have mm. went through her oh. because I saw. It. I've heard. I've heard that doesn't feel. You know, people have had that happen, and that's why I wondered. People have intense responses to that happening. Yes, yes, they do. I'm mm-hmm. very, very sensitive to that. At that event, we had the opportunity of investigating with uh, Dalen Spratt from Ghost Brothers and uh, the Tennessee Wraith Chasers were there. Oh, good people. They're yeah, yes. good for you. Thank you. So, did, did you learn anything from them, or did they learn anything from you? Oh, they were just lots of fun uh-huh. to investigate with. Yeah, because they've done it a lot. Yeah. So what else? This is really fun. Well, then there was a, we'll go back to the Ohio State Performatory. There was a uh, parapsychon is what they had. I had a pleasure of investigating with Daniel Klaas of the Hinsdale House, which I've been to mm-hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, that place is, it's, it's creepy. It's, that's all I can say, it's creepy. Well, give us, okay, well, after you tell about what you were going to tell, tell us about the Hinsdale House and maybe there's some history and makes it creepy. What makes it creepy is the question. Well, people died in there mm-hmm. you know, people from the owners and that. A lot of animals went missing. Uh, Native Americans occupy the woods in the back. It's mainly the woods is what makes it creepy. Okay, that makes sense. When I first got there, this was like six o'clock at night. The sun was still out. I was up there asking if there's any spirits around. Please let me know. All of a sudden, I could hear footsteps coming my way, but there was nothing there. Mm. And then later that night, we got a stick figure on the SLS camera. So mm-hmm. Supposedly, if something's there, it'll pop up as a stick figure. Right. I've seen those on, I think, Ghost Adventures. I think they have that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now uh, we, were, we were upstairs in Claire's room, and we were just communicating with whatever was there, and some something got thrown at somebody he's like what the hell was that <laughs> right next to him and everybody heard it upstairs oh, wow. uh-huh. so that kind of freaked the guy out i don't remember what the guy's name was but i was there overnight for a couple hours by myself and i have to throw this out there i don't want to ruin it for everybody but they have a mouse that will freak you out a mouse uh-huh. Because <laughs> I, had, I, I had sensors. I had sensors in the hallway leading up, <laughs> leading upstairs from at the downstairs. And they went off. It was like a Rite Aid. They're like a Rite Aid sensor. I could go, bee, 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 bee. I'm going to find out with a mouse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't help but laugh. I guess you debunked that then. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm like, Dang it, I got a mouse. I got a paranormal mouse. A paranormal mouse. Mm-hmm. Yep, I got video of the of the mouse <laughs> of the room. I'm like, oh, that kind of ruined it for me. Yeah, that would ruin it for anybody. But I want to go back. Oh, I would. That sounds. Who? What is Claire's room? Do you have a? Why is it called that? That was her room. That was the owner. Ah. Uh, the owner's room. So Claire was was her last name Hinsdale? I don't remember. Okay. What the. Google it again. I'm sorry. No, I'm good. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but it was okay. Room. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's, I'll it's, Google it and see what it says. 
okay. you know, and other people can too. It's real easy to do that, you know. Yeah. But I hate, hate to have them Google it, but some of our brains are kind of kind of tired. Yeah. Kind yeah. of trying to remember everything. Yeah. Well, you know, working, job, kids, mom, you know, yeah. you know it can make your, your brain tired. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, back to the <laughs> Parapsychon there at uh, Ohio State Reformatory. Uh-huh. You had a chance to meet Amy Bruner of Kindred Spirits. Yeah, she's nice. She, I, I don't Chip, know her, but I like her. And then Chip Coffee. I only investigated for maybe a couple minutes. That was about it. Uh huh. Oh yeah. So Amy. Well, Amy's always. You know, she was on Ghost Hunters before she was on Kindred Spirits. I used to watch that a lot. So mm-hmm. I, I'm really familiar with who she is, and I am familiar with who Chip Coffee is too. Mm-hmm. So they were there. So they were. They were fun to investigate with. But it was only for a couple minutes, but it's all worth it, I guess. <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> actually, to get back, I haven't actually. I really haven't talked to any of them. They were investigating with the group of people. I was just hanging out. So they weren't recording. They were just investigating. Yes. Uh, yes they were investigating. Good for them. I wouldn't have thought they'd have time. <laughs> they do so much else already. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yep. do you investigate all the time, or just like on as much Twitter? as I can? But since the COVID hit, it's everything's been slowed down now. Oh, I know it. Anybody trying to do anything that's out in public, it's very difficult. Yes. 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 Have you also investigated the Victorian House? No. No, you haven't? Okay, that's no. the one that, the uh, Victorian House Museum, that, that's Rosella C. Rowe. She's been there a lot, so. Yeah, she's trying to get me down there. Oh, I think you'd enjoy it from all her stories. They're pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, do you have any other ones that you want to share before we end our meeting? Randolph Infirmary. Okay. That's in uh, Indiana. Uh-huh. I was doing a tour with, tour with them. I was walking along the woman's, woman's wing. And all of a sudden, I got my shirt tail pulled. <laughs> God. That, 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 that's about the only physical one I've gotten. I've never been scratched because I don't provoke any of the spirits because they once were humans, too. Right. I treat them all with respect. Good. But uh, I got a whole whole list of places to have been. Bellar House, Monroe House. Got a response. We were recording with the, uh, yeah, we were doing the Estes Method again, and we got some pretty foul language coming through. It's like, Le- leave me alone kind of response. Uh-huh. But with cursing? Yes. Yes. We yeah, won't go and know what it actually said. <laughs> no, let's not and say we did. <laughs> so, we, you know, we don't curse on our show here. We try no. not to anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, we got that there. Um, Ashmore states, they, the spirits love the... Boo Bear. Okay, it's good. what's the Ashmore Estates? Yes, that's in Illinois. Uh huh. And they love what? The boot. It's called the Boo Bear. Oh, it's a, the, yeah. It's a, go ahead. Explain that for people. Yep, it's a teddy bear that has a light and it, it makes statements. It's a trigger object. Right. Anything that goes close to it, it'll set it off. Uh huh. Try to get it to. And it wasn't know. a mouse this time. No. no. <laughs> I think it was spirits, you know, hanging out by the Boo Bear. Stick figures would show up with the SLS camera. I think that is so cool. I wish we had the ability to show that stuff on my show here. I still have video. Yep, I still have video of of where places with the SLS camera that I will send to you. I would love to see that because I've seen it on TV, but to see it, you know, what you've got would be really wonderful. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, I got a video of that. And then the pictures of some of the places that I've been, I'll send it to you. Oh, would you? That would be great. I mean, this podcast will go up on Tuesday, this next week. So what else have you got? Because I know you've seen, been to a lot of places. And what's hard, I think, is when you've been to a lot of places, it's hard to remember everything that's happened. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, because everything's different, mm-hmm. um, different to different places too. But most of our experiences that we get, is through EVPs, mm-hmm. sitting around for hours upon hours, and you just get EVPs. That's but EVPs it. are good. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are good. Some of them are. Some of them are not. Now, have you run into evil stuff? I have. I have yet to run into anything that jumps right out yet. Okay, that's. I wondered because I know several people have, mm-hmm. and especially when they're investigating. Um, the growl that you heard in the one place, I worry about that one. Yes, that was the old Lincoln County Jail. That uh-huh. was uh, down in a dungeon. Got an EVP of get out and a growl. 
I was sitting down there by myself. I said, okay, I'm leaving. I'm <laughs> leave. Bye. I'm out of here. <laughs> you don't have to tell yeah. me twice. <laughs> no. Nope, nope. And then the second time I was there at the uh, Old Licking County Jail, I was with a team out of Illinois. They were doing a web show and their name is uh, In the Shadows. I think there was four of them. They were up throughout the jail, separated. I was downstairs monitoring the monitors and there was two other people, but they were in the office away from everybody, Terry Long and Jeff Fent. And then all of a sudden we hear this loud woman scream, like fist clenching kind of sound. Mm -hmm. And I ran into the office and I asked them, did you guys hear that? Yep, that happens all the time. And it's uh, Mae Varner, <laughs> who used to reside there. She uh, was sent there because she uh, murdered her husband back in, I think it was the 1800s. And I think she was put to death there. Mm -hmm. So her spirit is there. Yeah, imagine it would be. You know, yes, that's pretty traumatic. Mm -hmm. Sent chills down my spine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet. I, that's awesome that that happened when I was there. You, you don't have any nerves is what I think, you know. <laughs> I guess, oh, no. I'd have been, I'd probably left that building, <laughs> not returned. No, I'll just decide anything once. Well, I really do appreciate all this today. And oh, I thank you for, you're just so fun. I thank you for being on this show. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this podcast, I encourage you to share it with others you think would also be interested. If you'd like to know more about me, go to M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-P-O-L-L.com and or authormasterminds.com forward slash M-A-R-Y dash A-N-N dash P-O-L-L. Until next time, may the wind always be at your back, the sun on your face, and the good Lord walk beside you. Thank you.